Hello and welcome back to Imperator Rome, and finally, welcome back to the Pontius Campaign. This will be a very different video than what you're used to, but I'm very curious to see how you guys respond to it. As you know, I've spent a lot of time on this, but I personally feel that it was worth it. Anyways, there's two things to point out for this video. One, this is obviously an older version of Invictus, and this video was first recorded around two months ago. And two, there will be parts in the video where there is no game audio, as per usual. I am a very good YouTuber after all, but they have mostly been covered with background music and posts, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Also, if you're looking for a place to hang out and talk about Imperator, or anything else really, then feel free to join my Discord. Link is in the description. Again, I did work very hard on this video, and it did take me a long time, so please tell me in the comments if you enjoyed it. Or didn't. Also, please show me by liking the video. Or disliking. Both are extremely helpful feedback. Anyways, I would not hold you any longer. I do hope you enjoy this video. Let's go. Alright, welcome back to the Mythodated Kingdom. This episode is going to have a lot of expansion in it, so get ready for that. Let's look at our missions here. What have we already completed? We've already only completed one. Naval base is in Trebizoas. Oh, we need to take that. We did just release Karalsis from the Orontids because we couldn't take it because my, our ally Kamajene took this themselves and they wouldn't give it up. So we released them on the 8th of June, 517, we can declare war on them and then full annex them. Then we can build a level 2 port here. Then we get ship recruit speed and starting experience from that port specifically. This tree is essentially just expanding up north in further into the black sea pretty much we get up to as far as here so this is going to be a lot of expansion i do think we have to go west as well right ah yes conquer the coasts i guess i'll get this shore but there's no reason to go down this because well i can't i actually cannot go down that two ports and a marketplace in amisos we need five cities that have at least a form and either a grand temple or great theater okay so i can get these two done oh, yeah we also have our vassal here our client state to come as jenna here we want to eventually feed syria to them so we should definitely work on that but the seleucids and tomex are way too strong for me to fight right now so what do we want to go for we're so we already have like the main thing about this campaign is that we are pretty syncretic if you look at our pantheon here hellenic mithraic and, and anatolian as well so pretty much accept most of the people and it's i mean it's going to be quite a diverse realm indeed so i feel like we should probably go deeper for that i think we should probably try to get major syncretism i don't know what i've been doing so far Seems like I've been focusing on military a lot, yeah. I want to go for Mage and Secreticism. I think that makes sense for our campaign. In my Seleucid streams, I went for Mage and Secreticism, and it worked perfectly. Like, it was amazing because, well, you didn't have to worry about unrest anywhere, pretty much, because everyone was so happy. And it would take too much effort and too much time to try to convert every single pop you have. So, I think it's honestly just better to go Major Secretism, with the Seleucids at least, and I think it's, it'll be the same thing with the Mythodatics, uh, with, with, with the Mythodatics, because we're gonna be so expansive, we're gonna be having a lot of different cultures and a lot of different religions on Earth, so I think it makes sense that we go Major Secretism. So, we will get on that, we need three innovations for that, we have very bad research efficiency, oh my god. I think most of them, yeah, all the provinces seem to have cities, so I just need to develop the cities, pretty much. So, so that helps my research efficiency. Mission trade ties is done. We get plus two diplomatic reputation. That'd be helpful for us. Unfortunately, our Basilius brings that down <laughs> by three. All right, choose us up. Time for war. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. We can already do this. I just need to build a found uh, f uh far f what what are they called? Forums. Yeah, yeah. I need to build forums in the places that already have. Great temple. So you have one. Just need to build a form in you. You have one. Just build a form in you. I don't care if it's Armenian. Yeah, that's actually fine. The bonus from this is quite nice. We can send another Karenid. If you remember from the last episode, Archibastus Karen is our like is our legendary Olympic winner. He's won like six or seven in a row. 
Uh, unfortunately, he seems to be too old to participate this time. So, you know what? I think we will nominate another Karenid. This guy's a Pontic, so let's just let it be gentle. I didn't mean to fight their navy. Just completely stack wiped it. Well, that war obviously wasn't very challenging at all. We need to now build up the ports here. I do not have a lot of manpower, man. Despite my size, I'm pretty- I'm pretty big. I do not have a lot of manpower. If we wish to expand our influence across the Black Sea, we must first establish a strong fleet. To establish a strong fleet, we must have a designated naval base large enough to hold such a fleet. Overseas ambitions, yeah, we can't go for this because Char Senese does not exist. So, um, yeah, we cannot go down this way. One of the following must be true. Oh, we can. We just need to own it at least. Yeah, because we can't ally them. Gains a claim on Torica. Oh, it's just this. Okay, fair enough. All right. Scythians are now our next target. They seem to be allied. They don't seem strong at all. Oh my god. They're, they are significantly smaller than us. In every way, essentially. Now that we have established a naval base in Trapezoas, we now have the means to protect the Greeks across the sea. The Greeks in Torica have been all but defeated by the royal Scythians with Charsonesis as well as the cities of the Bosporan Kingdom being the only former Greek colonies that have not fallen to Scythian rule. Um. Thus, let us stake claims to Torica so we may cross the sea as sincere defenders of Greek autonomy. Protect the Greeks of Torica. Speaking of which... Okay, the Greeks are still there. Uh, religion... Still Hellenic. Mm, not... Uh, slightly. I mean, some of them are, some of them aren't. But the Greeks are still there, yeah. So I, we can we could save them. We could still save them. We go for cultures first. Culture seems to be at war with Scythia. Might be the best uh, opportunity to go for them now. We have a claim on them, right? Yes, we do. We want to go for cultures so we can complete this. We can ally this to Lucid Kingdom. Hmm. And the Ptolemaics, actually. I would rather ally the Ptolemaics than use them against the Seleucids. I feel. Oh, Parthia formed. Why not? It's a good ally to have to deter against others. They're merely call me into the war. Sure, whatever. Hmm, I see their army. Alright, let's declare this war. Yeah, by the way, I made Albania tribal vassal, so... I don't obviously plan to grow into here because this is just a whole bunch of useless land, so... Might as well vassalize Albania. I would love to absolutely destroy this city. <laughs> I know it's Pontic, but uh, I kind of really want the money from that. It's got 37 pops. I mean, let's just do a... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I really want the money. All right, this is done now. That will be helpful. Conquest of Colchis. More population up. Okay, so what's this about? Right, so we really just need to develop those two cities. And this, any own territory, any own territory. Countries to go to two. So, well, I'm lost. I'm actually so lost. So, Kiskios needs to have a tribal settlement. Unfortunately. So, okay. And also, it needs... Because they can't have both a tribal, a tribal settlement and a court of law, obviously. Is in province cultures. I don't know what that means. I simply do not know what that means. See, this is the province of cultures. I have the entire province. Do I also need a tribal settlement there? I don't know. We'll see. I, we'll see if it counts or not. Cultures has no food. Okay. Right. You need to get some grain, please. Get some grain in there. Yeah. You should be okay. You should be okay. You have plenty of food in this province. Just that it's winter, I think. Yeah, it's winter. Oh, yeah, what does this great wonder do? Whoa, national output is so nice. Monthly PI, diplomatic range, and oratory tech investment. This is really nice wonder here. Asmatics are involved on a war in two fronts currently, and they seem to be losing to the Antigonids. <laughs> Interestingly. Uh, okay, sure. All right, Scythia, let's go. We'll spare all the boss in towns. Ah, free fort. Awesome. It's a perfect place to put a fort, too. Oh, that's a pretty big city you got there. Maybe you're not as uncivilized as I thought. Oh, this is already done. Okay. The feudatory of Colchis is formed out of all owned and subject owned territories in the provinces of Colchis, Suaneti, and Abasgoy. Colchis, Abasgoy, where's Suaneti? I don't have that. 
I don't necessarily want a client state. I don't want that, actually. I I'll just keep it. <laughs> I'll just keep it. Is anyone going to attack me? <laughs> they're, they're scared. They don't- they want to attack me, but they don't at the same time. I have a lot of pressure metals. Yeah, that's honestly why I want to keep cultures as well. They have two pressure metals here. Like, this is really nice. There we go, there we go, there we go, okay. Uh... Oh, that's gonna take a long time to get there. Holy shit! Dude. Alright, yeah, time to peace out. <laughs> time to peace out! That is insane! Well, that's the piece. Honestly, that's the piece that I wanted anyway, so that doesn't matter to me. Yeah, all right. Um, sure. <laughs> we're, we're, we're okay. We're okay. I'm okay. Oh, God. Name placement. You know what? We will give the governorship to Artabasis Karen, the Olympic legend. He absolutely deserves a governance after bringing so much glory to the Mythodetic Kingdom. It's claim on Obia and Tyrus. Where's that? That's there. Okay. So, do you get the Bosporans, a Mithraic, a Mithraic Pontic citizen, appears in Theodosia. Can I. Okay, sure. Drive back the Scythians, Province of Torica. Okay. Good, good, good. March further. We can march forth into Scythia. So, we do need another war against them. Peticapion has a form. That's it. And we know we need to. Also integrates the Bosporans, so let's work on that. So to get the Bosporans to at least citizen, and Pentacapion needs a forum. Oh, okay, that's the Antigonids gone from Asia. Oh wait, nope, they still have two holdings here in, in Asia. I could just go to war with Bithynia, I think. I do need to go to war with them, so yeah. You're an Antigonid vassal, right? Yeah, but Antigonids, like, they're a, a complete non-threat. Guess we get court of law and library. Then there we go. Boss for integration. The boss for citizen appears. Get more commerce. Local citizen happiness. Okay, good. That's done. Then next, actually, let's look at these characters that came. I don't. I don't know. I don't know who they are. I can't really. I'd assume they're quite young. I, I don't know who they are though. <laughs> like I have no idea who they are. So I just. I don't know. I really do not know. They're here, though. They're somewhere. Oh, is it you? Oh, it must be you. You have... Okay, wait, is it you? Look, it's not actually you. I don't know who it is. Minneapolis Torque, where is that? Ah, oh, so that needs to be a city. We need to develop it. Okay. Sure, it needs to develop this, okay. Right, 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 right. So, what do we need? What do we need for that? 45 and 180. Oh, well, there you go. Right, let's build the city. Save up all the money so we can use it to upgrade it to uh, build the buildings. Then we can do this. Tersonesis. Tersonesis. Let's port uh, four buildings. There we go. Okay, let's see. What do we want to build in here? We don't have a fort here. A fort's going to be nice. Actually, I want to build a fort here somewhere. This is. Is it any marshlands? No, it's just forests and stuff. A fort. Can you. Hold on. Can you walk? You can. Okay. So you want a fort here. Yeah, fort there. That's a good fort to protect up north. And there's already a strong fort here. Uh, so I don't really need to build any more forts. We'll get a granary for sure. Why not? Trade relations with the kingdom. I don't want to spend all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, that was just a no-brainer. All right, let's finally go westwards. I make a shit ton of money. That's crazy. I have a lot of gold, to be fair. I do have a lot of precious metals. Two free investments. Gain claim on Asia and Phrygia. So that's, yep, that's just essentially the rest of Asia. Oh, the Seleucids and Armenians are at war now. Okay. Parthia has indeed fixed their borders, thankfully. Okay. This still looks ridiculous, but at least Parthia itself looks a bit better. I still cannot call upon Apollo. I really do not know why. I actually do not know why I can't call upon Apollo. There we go, that's done. And it gets even more building slots, sure. To be a piece to do that, then we just need to go to war. Uh, we can actually soon... 528. We currently have all another war. I guess... I guess we could just prepare for that war again. This time I will be sure to get some mercenaries. Oh, that means I can do this. So for 20 years, I get negative 20% recruit mercenary cost. Okay, so that section's already done. I am- I'm quite old. I'm- I'm actually quite old. I'm 70 years old, man. 
<laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. All right, now let's do close work. Oh, I forgot to make a freaking cast a spell. I oh, I can now quell the tribes. Chief the barbarians spawn in the Bosporus area. With the subjugation of the Bosporian kingdom, many of the noble Scythian tribes that enjoyed many privileges and even ties of kinship with the former Bosporian kings fear they will lose influence with the central government far across the sea in Pontus. To prevent any further issues, let us incite those disloyal to show their faces and put an end to any separatist thoughts. Oh, that's just right on the thing. Okay. Just right on the city. We might even lose that as well. Which is just okay. Cool. Awesome. Just directly on the city. I did not expect that, honestly. Antipatrids want an alliance. Actually, not a bad alliance for the Alchemakids. Not a bad alliance for taking on the Alchemakids, because the, Al the Tomeics are not gonna help. Simple as. They're just not gonna help against the Alchemakids. So, I will. Actually accept that. I have to wait for Scythia to end the current war that they're in before declaring war. Alright, we now have major syncreticism. Good. Now we don't have to worry about uh, conversion. Now I guess we go for Marshall. Because I think I should probably try to get some legions eventually. Maybe? Do I really need legions? I don't... I don't think I do. I don't feel like I'm going to be really facing anyone that I'm going to need legions for. I mean, maybe. It's only really the Romans that I will have an issue with and the Ptolemaics. Actually, I can always just get Royal Guard right now if you want. But yeah, I don't think I need it. We will get more discipline, though. Right, that's done, finally. Oh, okay. I need to <laughs> I need to drop my levies down because this workshoshin is hurting me a lot. I might get rid of my alliance with the Ptolemaics because, honestly, I, I, I don't want to get involved in wars. I'm getting involved in too many of the wars. It is really annoying. Also, I don't see a reason for this alliance. I was going to use them against the Lucas, but then, like, that would be quite conflicting. Um, because I want Syria myself. Uh, at least for Kamajene. So I don't think they're that good of an ally to have, honestly. Also, they're just not going to help me in any of my wars. Like, let's be realistic. They're not going to help me in any of my wars because they, the AI has no idea how to fight wars overseas. Um, so I'd rather actually ally the Parthians because they'll be good against the Seleucids. Um... And they won't, you know, clash with my claims. So I think I will do that, but not yet because I don't want to get any involved in whatever they're doing right now. I'll only ally them once I am ready to go to war with the Seleucids. Oh, I didn't realize Parthenion needs a Greek temple. No. You're telling me I need to build another city then? Oh, I need to build another city. Okay, fair enough. I, I don't want to pass out on these bonuses. These are pretty good, so... There's a lot of cities in this one province. Oh, <laughs> you're kidding, right? You're kidding! I just lost my great temple because lightning struck it. Wait, no, it struck the... Hmm? Where's your points of lightning and struck the temple of the goddess of Oharis in... Unasi? What? Uh-huh. We suffer and assure everyone that all is well. Why do I lose it in Sinope? It's not even... It's not even in Sinope. It didn't strike in Sinope. Why do I lose the temple in Sinope? Hello? Wait. I got that money so I could rebuild the temple. The temp. Alright. Sure. <laughs> I think that's a bit bugged. I think that event is bugged. The temple didn't even get destroyed. There wasn't even a temp- Was there a temple here? Or maybe it just told me the wrong thing? It might have told me just the wrong city. I don't know, man. I think I need to get rid of military service, honestly. Because this is really hurting my my culture happiness. And, like, the people aren't, aren't as happy as they I feel like they should be. I'll get less levies overall, but I think it's better. I think, honestly, I should just go Royal Guard. Oh, Artabasis finally died. We will go down in history as the greatest Olympian. Why are you bleeding them dry? Is this like bugged? Is it just showing me the wrong thing? Do one of these actually like in the just one of these in the province of culture just needs a court of law? Or is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're trying to convey to me? So I also need the tribal settlements. Yeah, it was it was just showing me the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> Yikes, that's a bit bugged. Okay. Preferably the places that don't have food. Go to there, then we should be a kid. Okay, that's nice. Gives us happiness. Then we can complete this. Uh, what's this? Client rule? I still don't want to do client rule. 
No. I don't want to do client rule. Right? Yeah. I relocate the precious metals to myself. Doesn't say I need to own these myself, so I guess I could just make some subjects over here. Not that they would be very helpful. But I would like to have boss spread subjects. So, like, I want to take you from the Liza Mackets when I declare one of them. And I guess what I could do is just feed this to you. Yeah, just feed this whole province to you. That's quite convenient. That is very convenient indeed. I need to pounce on that right now. Oh, did I... <sighs> what do you mean, succession crisis? Mythogenes the first? How does that even work? There we go. Appease the Cochian tribes. There we go. The region of Cochus is an extremely diverse melting pot of different languages, cultures, and traditions. The city of Dioscorius alone has hundreds of languages that are spoken amongst its inhabitants. Thus, it is quite the impressive feat that we have temporarily appeased the main, the many tribes and people of Colchis. Now we can subdue the coastal tribes. Boom. Okay, that's done. And now we have Champion of Eugene Greeks. There we go. Eugene? Eugene Greeks. And then that's the end. That's it. Oh, political influence. Oh, P.I.? I can't do that yet, then. Greece of Torca's done. Right, now let's get ready for war against the Alakimakids, I guess. I, I kind of want to wait just a bit longer, because I need some things to get done. I need to get Royal Guard, and I need to stab up, and I also need to complete this. So, I'm going to wait just a bit longer. I can't really get Royal Guard now, can I? Because my slow stability, so... I guess I just gotta go for it, man. I'll wait until I complete the mission first, though. Champion of Eugene Greeks. We have liberated all of the Greeks along the northern and eastern Black Sea, and all Greeks along the coast now know of the name of our great Basilius. Thus, let us officially declare ourselves the savior of the Black Sea Greeks. Having ushered in a, a brand new era for Greeks in the Black Sea, it may be fitting for a ruler to adopt a fitting title or epithet to commemorate their achievements. I mean, Mega Sotir, obviously. That's so cool. Sotir Mega- Mythodides the first Sotir Megas Mythodated. Okay, now we can finish this. We get 30 popularity, which is huge. I really need that popularity. Awesome. Finish that. Now, that is the official end of the mission tree. Okay, sure. Now I could end it here, but I won't. I'm gonna keep going. I wanna, I wanna conquer more. I wanna conquer all my claims that I have. So that means we need to go west. Uh, might as well do the matter of Phrygia. That think that makes sense. Yeah, we might as well do that. Oh, if you think Epirus is doing quite well, well they're not. They're a client state of a tiny city state in Greece, Tegea. I don't know how, and I don't know why, but they're a client state of them. And I think that's probably why Rome is so reluctant to attack, because Tegea is in a massive... Just just the entirety of the Peloponnesus is in this one defensive league. So if the Romans declared war on Epirus, they would be going to war with the entirety of Greece. Except for Leprion, interestingly enough. Oh, they're client state of Sparta. So, yeah, essentially, yes, the entirety of Greece. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, right. Maybe not. Maybe we don't go for Eliza Mackets. So we could to make course. So Zuka's to cut one this for North Phoenicia. What do we do? Do we do we do we do this? Do we do we do this? Do we do do we go for the Seleucids? I think we go for Seleucids. I think we ally the Parthians. Uh Parthians are in their own war. This should be done soon. I think we ally the Parthians. And go to the Seleucids. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we do. I, we have to. Do you have any claims? No, we do not. We need to get claims. Or Parthia's not going to join. Low manpower. Uh, sure. Sure. We'll just, we're just going to declare war. Uh, that's a lot of people on your side, but it's fine. It's fine. The goal of this war is to essentially get all of Assyria for my vassal, I think. Right? Maybe? No. Just as much of just anything for my vassal, honestly. 
Just take anything. Medical accident. Oh, I'm one-eyed now. At least now I look cool. <laughs> it's a lot, Lucas. I need to put you on... Yeah, you're already on Border Patrol. It's good. Or... What is it? I keep forgetting what it's called. Borderlands. That's what it is. You're an amazing governor as well. You are attacking me there? That's... I I do not advise doing that. Oh, you're st are you still going for it? Oh, you're still going... Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. We took it. All right. The Tomics are losing. How are you losing? Are the Armenians declared war on them? It's Patriots will join, but not the Parthians. Parthians, low man power. Yeah, I don't think they're ever going to join, actually. Unfortunately. Oh, the war just ended. The war just ended. I just saw that. Okay. Right. <laughs> the Seleucids are actually taking some losses there, but then I guess Seleucids realize that and just peaced out. The Alchemakids are at war with them now. <laughs> huh? Cherosene, what? How do you, how, how have you even, why, why did you declare that war? After patch a Ptolemaic war? Dude, don't call me into that fucking war. Do not call me into that war. Never. Don't. Just don't call me into that war. Okay, well this is interesting. The, Ar or the Armenians are on, are on the east. And we gotta essentially just go for Syria. That's what we go for. Yeah, I wanna give all of this to Commissione. Well, this alliance is now useless. I'm just gonna dissolve it. <laughs> the alliance is actually useless. I expected help, but I couldn't get any. I should be okay. The war goal is pretty easy to defend. Oh, thank God for this nice level 2 fort here. Right? And the alchemy markets took that. <laughs> That's so annoying. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Cherosene. Isn't that... I'm sorry. Where is Cherosene? Wait. Uh, wait. Uh, what are you- no, no, no. What are you going for? Mesopotamia! That's in Mesopotamia! Where- How do you expect to take that? Are you dumb? Okay, we need to follow the Seleucids here. They're gonna take that back. We need to follow them, so we can take it immediately off of them. No, go take it back, dude. What are you- what are you doing? I'll fight you. Just go- no, no. Go take the city back. Go take Antiochia back. Dude, go take the city back. Where are you going off to? Okay, sure. Whatever. You don't want to take it back. Whatever. I, I, just fine with me. Oh, oh, okay. We, they did. They did. They did. Good, good, good. We killed 10,000 of them. We do not have that much manpower, to be fair. Uh, yeah. We, we killed... <laughs> that was a big one. Okay. So, get you in there. Essentially, I just have to wait for the lights of Mackets to just peace out. Eventually, they'll get forced out of the war because they're not <laughs> they're not good um the armenians are actually sieging down seleucia they have made it down the euphrates and are sieging down seleucia do you even have the war go oh oh your war goes softening ah it's so unfortunate that's so unfortunate <laughs> that i that i took softening so i don't know what you're gonna do but uh i i hope i hope you can get something good out of it all right, now we just wait. Literally, that's all we gotta do. What is that? What have you done? At this fucking point, I think I'm just gonna declare what Eliza Mac gets. I think I, I, I cannot be bothered at this point. Uh, I, I'm gonna go declare what Eliza Mac gets. This word, I need them just, just. Come on, dude. I've been waiting for so long. Yeah, let's just do that, cause I, I'm done, man. All right, take that, please. Take that, please. Oh, it's just gonna flip to me. That's just fine, actually. It's preferable. Sick. Good. Cool. Right. <sighs> now I can get out of this war. Okay, this is the piece I'm gonna go for. There we go. Not much of character expansion. Just get went all to Kujine. I'm gonna fix this. Don't worry. There we go. I just gave that back to Armenia. Just to fix the borders. This is still a bit sus, but whatever. Golfer piece is gone, but I still have... Oh, okay. Once the next monthly pick, I need to do that. Okay, there we go. We should be good now. We should be good with... Actually, let's do one more. There we go. Oh, Malos is in this war. They were allied to Elias Mackets. Oh, that's perfect, actually. This war is going somewhere so far. <laughs> it's just a whole bunch of back and forth. Just me scrolling through the different theaters of war. Oh, that's a... <laughs> That's an annoying rebellion. Oh my god, this war is so tedious, man. Uh, I need to uh, set a piece. The Melos, there we go. Okay, right. That was 
annoying. They're gone. They're dealt with. Like, it's really just more tedious than anything else. So, you're probably not going to see most of this war because, I mean, it's just not going to be fun to watch. Like, trust me. It's also not like it's a constant back and forth. It's just, like, a long war. Simple. Like, not much is going on. So, I'm just sieging things down. And, like, occasionally re-sieging things that they take back from me. Oh, we took Chalson. Oh my god. Now I didn't even notice that was a level 4 fort. <laughs> we finally took it though. That took so long. Oh, I can finally do Apollo. Cool. Where's Pessinos? Pessinos, I need you to go there. And I am going to do something that may not be liked by most people, but something that is quite necessary. I'm gonna have to desecrate that. Sorry, Cybele. I know you're the mother goddess of the Anatolians, but that's not the right place for you, you know? That's not the right place for you to be. I think it's better that you go in probably the largest city in the Cappadocian world. There we go. Boom. Cybele. Okay. Okay, let's get this peace deal done. Taking these guys as a vassal, we've also taken Chalcedon as well, because we couldn't really full annex them in the peace deal, so we just took them as a Editory. Right, that was big. We need to now chill. Actually, no, I want to continue on with my wars. Uh, you are free, actually, so I'm going to attack you. And then I'm going to attack you as well. Oh, wait, you're allied to the Liza Magids. Well, isn't that convenient? Wow, okay. That means I can immediately go back to war with them. Isn't that so awesome i might sound a, a very sarcastic but it's actually quite awesome that i can go back to war with them mithridates launched an invasion of the carpian tribe of ganukla to liberate the bosporan cities of scythia from barbarian rule the tribe was however under the protection of the lysimachids therefore the second lysimachid war began just as the first one ended Having its manpower already depleted from the first war, they could not put up any serious resistance against the armies of Mithridates. As a consequence, the remainder of Lysimachid Anatolia was conquered. All Black Sea coastal holdings were conquered from Ganukla and transferred to the Bosphorian client kingdom of Niconia. Mithridates also made further gains into Thrace, even conquering Lysimachia. This would spell the end for the kingdom of Lysimachus as they would undergo a serious decline after losing their capital and their many rich Anatolian holdings. They would eventually be fully partitioned in the Great Thracian Wars by the Northern Thracian tribes. This is the highest aggressive expansion I've had in a long time. Some years later, Mithridates would pass at the age of 74. He would be succeeded by his son Praxibulos. The new Basileus was immediately greeted with an extremely advantageous opportunity. It turned out that the Kingdom of Armenia was facing a crisis. A pretender to the Armenian throne, the brother of the king, fled to Sinope, seeking protection under Praxibulos. This gave the Basileus justification to intervene in the Armenian crisis. He would launch an invasion soon after, but instead of placing the pretender on the throne of Armenia, he created a client kingdom in the region of Lesser Armenia. Eventually, this client kingdom would conquer the remainder of the Armenian kingdom. This expansion would be complemented with further conquests in the region of Colchis by Praxibulos himself. My grandson is married to my daughter. The year of 169 BC would be an historic one, as Praxibulos would create the first standing army in the kingdom's history, the warriors of Mithras. The first commander put in charge of the army would be the king's grandson and heir apparent, Ariston. Rebellion would break out in the tiny settlement of Seleucia Pyria. The settlement was formerly under Comagene control, but after the revolts had been subdued, the settlement would come under direct Mithridatic control. This would essentially become an administrative policy within the kingdom, as provinces that rebelled against local Comagene rule for more autonomy would instead find themselves being annexed directly into the kingdom of Pontus. This would culminate in Comagene losing its entire coastline to Pontus. Wanting to further increase Pontic power projection in the eastern Mediterranean, Praxibulos ordered the invasion of Cyprus, which is ruled by the once mighty Antigonids. Unfortunately, they were allied to the Antipatrids, who honored the call to arms on behalf of the Antigonids, foregoing the decades-long alliance they once had with us. No one could have expected these next series of events that would eventually lead to the Mithridatic domination of Macedon and Greece.
There were many battles in this war, but none were as important as the Battle of Lysimachia. It was a battle between Pontus and all of her subjects against a joint Antipatrid Antigonid army. The battle was heavily in favor of the Macedonians who far outnumbered the initial Pontic levy from Cappadocia that engaged them. For the first two days of fighting, the Pontics were on the defense, but were eventually on the brink of defeat as they would have less and less soldiers available to fill their ranks. All of her subjects would retreat from battle, suffering too many casualties all except for the Comagenians. Given their experience in Syria against the Seleucids, they were much less likely to break in battle and fought with incredibly high discipline, making the battle last an extra day. The extra day was exactly what they needed, as that was the day that Ariston and the warriors of Mithras arrived. At this point, the Macedonian army had already suffered significant casualties from the past two days of fighting, and one could only imagine what they felt when they saw the arrival of a completely new 12,000 strong army led by the heir of the Basileus. Ariston now led the battle in that final day with the Comagenians and the remainder of the Pontic Levy. This would be the first battle the warriors of Mithras would partake in, and they would soundly defeat the already battered Macedonian army. In the aftermath, Ariston and the warriors would be hailed as saviors who turned a sure defeat into an astounding victory. However, if it weren't for the bravery of the Comagenians, who delayed defeat, Ariston wouldn't have arrived in time to save anyone. If this battle had amounted to a loss, it is likely that the Mithridatics wouldn't have bothered pushing further into Thrace and consequently Macedon. Another succession crisis? Oh, uh, I guess it's because it was my grandson that inherited. I didn't realize I was even that close to death. That's so unfortunate. Anyways, uh, look at all these bloodlines. The Macedonians would have no time to recover as they would have to immediately face a pretender rebellion. Although the newly crowned Basileus, Ariston, could have used this as an opportunity to quickly end hostilities with the Antipatrids, he instead continued to march further into their core lands, defeating every Macedonian army that faced them, pretender or not. Soon, the new seat of Antipatrid power, Thessalonica, was occupied by the warriors, and the royal palace was stormed. A meeting would be held with the king of Macedon, and Ariston would reveal his list of demands. First, the island of Cyprus and all Antipatrid territories in Anatolia were to be transferred to Pontus. Second, they were to recognize Ariston as the rightful ruler of Macedonia. Third, as a compromise, the Antipatra dynasty was allowed to rule in a reduced territory within the province of Chalkidiki, but they were to regularly pay tribute to the Mithridatics in exchange for protection from pretenders. The remainder of the Antipatra pretenders would hold out for a number of years in Greece before being conquered by the Achaean League. I hope you're enjoying the story. <laughs> I feel like it's developing quite nicely, at least in my head currently. I hope I executed it well in, in editing. Well, this seems to be my opportunity. Or Tanya. That's what you're going for. You, you can easily take that. Romans have been <laughs> rapidly expanding as of late, and they have been destroying the Carthaginians so far. This is the perfect opp opportunity to attack them, though. Uh, because, well, they're at war with Carthage. So, we need to get ready. I mean, it should be easy, honestly, to beat them. The only issue will be their navy. <laughs> their navy is just massive. But I should easily be able to take down their vassals here. And once I hold the war goal, I'll just get taking war goal, and it will eventually end. So, just really, I just have to wait around to finish the war. Uh, so, yeah, we should be okay. There shouldn't actually... Hold on. Yeah, they don't have a straight shot to their vassals here. So, we should be alright. In 154 BC, Ariston began his campaign to liberate the Bosporans of the eastern Thracian coast by ordering the invasion of the various Thracian tribes in the region. The campaign would be led by the local governor Zaprion Anaxarchides, who was an experienced military leader that participated in the Battle of Lysimachia. There were two republics, however, that enjoyed nominal protection from the Roman Republic, and their conquest by the Mithridatic Kingdom would sour relations with the Italic power and would lead to the greater conflict between the two in the future. The campaign would overall be successful with no major battles of note. Around 30,000 men were deployed for this campaign, and with that many soldiers occupied in the west, a new challenger in the east would attempt to contain this newly forming empire in Anatolia. Um... <laughs> that is the absolute last thing I expected. War with the Ptolemaics? Are you serious? Really? I mean, fair enough. Literally all of my troops are focused elsewhere in Thrace, so... 
that's the perfect time to attack me. Yeah, that's really smart. What, what are you going for specifically? Clearly, Syria from Kamajene. Right. Okay. In 147, the Ptolemaics would invade Kamajene. Presumably, their goals were to transfer overlordship of the kingdom and demand that Ariston give up his recent conquest in Macedon. These terms, of course, could not be accepted. Ariston quickly ended the campaign in Thrace and traveled across the entire empire to get to Syria, calling upon all able-bodied men to join him. The ensuing war that commenced would be one of the deadliest and most devastating that Pontus would fight. It would cause a complete shift of geopolitical relations in the Levant and give birth to the most catastrophic rivalry between two empires in history. Okay, now to deal with these freaking Egyptians, I'm going to absolutely cripple them from this war, okay? They ha they don't stand a chance. They do not stand a chance in this war. I'm going to completely dis dismantle their entire empire if I can. I'm going to take as much land as possible down to at least uh, Judea, and maybe... oh. How how have you done that? And then maybe see if I can... I don't even know. I, I probably can't even take that much, to be fair. Um, but I'm going to at least just dismantle them. I'm going to make them just release as much things as possible. This is giving me flashbacks of my Seleucid streams. Anyone who's been there <laughs> for my streams, you know, you know, like, we've had the largest battles that you've ever seen in Imperator. Like, not even joking. We've I've had the largest battles you, you probably will ever see in Imperator in my streams. Uh, just massive stacks. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just stupid. How about we just go with just one massive death stack at this point? <clears throat> we're gonna have to. At least at the beginning of this war, we're just gonna have to go just fully death stack. <sighs> this war is very, very hard. But look at their units. They have no manpower, it seems. I don't know. Oh my god, man. This is... This is a fucking war for sure. Oh my god, this is huge. Okay. Uh, we do not have a lot of time. Uh, they're gonna just enforce peace, dude. I was just- I was just turning this around as well. Literally just turning it around. We need to- We need to rush right now. We need to rush down right now for that fort. We need to immediately assault it. Then we need to assault this fort. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but this is huge right here. We're catching all of them. All the retreating armies right here. Hopefully we catch all of them. Hopefully we can stack wipe them. Or maybe just do a lot of damage. Um... Okay, when they catch them, it's not going to be a stack wipe, surely. Uh, chase them down, chase them down. Okay. Took those guys out. Take that. Um, yeah, they're going to enforce peace. It's over. Uh, that's going to be an L, unfortunately. And there's not much I can do about that one. There's really not much I can do about that one. Uh, we're just going to have to rush. Rush, 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 rush. That's going to be an L. That's fine. Just hold them off. Just, just, just slow them down as much as possible. That's fine. Try to get all these guys down here. I don't know how, what that's going to do for us. But, yeah, we just... <sighs> the casualties to this war is just something incredible, honestly. They're going to all rush down here. Where are we retreating to? That's not a good place to retreat to. It's an absolutely horrible place to retreat to, actually. We are now sieging this down. We are going to assault it immediately. Okay, we took the war goal back. Oh my god, 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 run, run, run. Um, uh, we can white peace, we can white peace, we can white peace. <gasps> Holy shit! Oh my god, we can white peace. Oh, we fought to white peace. 150,000 versus 175,000 lost. I mean, when is it? It's after the monthly tick, so if I can reinforce one monthly tick, I don't know if this is going to work, but <clears throat> that's a monthly tick. There we go. Yeah, okay, let's just white peace. Yes, 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 white peace, white peace. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god, that... Guys, I'm telling you, that war... That was the hardest war I've ever fought in my life. That was... By far the hardest war I, I, I fought in Imperator. That was insane. I thought... I really thought I, I would be able to... Stand a chance, but clearly... Clearly, they are much stronger than I thought. Look at my legion! Oh my god! That's technically a win. We fought to white peace. They didn't take the war goal. That's technically a win for us. That was 400,000 dead in that war. 
the war would claim an estimated 325,000 lives, making it one of the deadliest wars in Mithridatic history. This would sow the seeds of rivalry as Ariston, in an act to cause destabilization in Egypt, would order the assassination of the current Basileus, Ptolemaeus III. A mere two months later, the assassination would turn out to be successful, immediately sparking a succession crisis back in Alexandria. The immediate assassination attempt of the next ruler, Cleopatra V, would be ordered. However, it would unfortunately be unsuccessful and Egypt would avoid being plunged into further crisis. Some years later, the gradual integration of Comagenian territories would be complete. Ariston commissioned an extensive development project, ordering the construction and further development of many farms, livestock ranches, and granaries to greatly increase the food production and storage capabilities in the region of Syria. These farms and granaries helped to feed the large garrisons stationed in the new series of fortifications that were also commissioned under this project. All of this would be supplemented with the creation of new roads to help transport troops and supplies to and from these locations. During this period, Ariston and the warriors of Mithras would spend the majority of their lives in Syria to oversee these constructions and to stand on guard in preparation for another Ptolemaic attack. In 130 BC, Ariston launched an invasion of Ptolemaic Canaan with the goal of kicking the Egyptians out of the Levant. However, only a couple months into the invasion, the Romans in the west invaded Macedonia with their presumed goal of reversing Ariston's conquest in the region. This meant that the empire was now fighting a war on two fronts against two major powers. Although he was originally meant to participate in the Ptolemaic campaign, the governor of Macedonia, Simonides Alexandrides, whose family was descended from a veteran of the legendary Silver Shields, was tasked in the defense of the region. Alright, I'm going to do a quick break in the narrative commentary, because I have to mention this. One of Egypt's legions has a commander with 21 marshal. This guy was a complete pain to fight. The western front against the Romans was relatively easy to defend due to the many fortifications built in the region after its conquest. The majority of battles would take place at Pella, once the capital of the great kings of Macedon. The Romans saw the city as one of great strategic importance due to its central location and cultural significance in the Macedonian world. The strategy applied by Simonides was simple. Wait for the Romans to besiege the fortress, and after assuring that reinforcements won't arrive for them, attack. The strategy was effective, and two years later, the Romans would accept a white peace, which would allow an estimated 30,000 soldiers to join the campaign in the east, which was much needed, as the Egyptians were slowly pushing back Ariston and had even taken Damascus. The campaign in the east was not going well for the Pontics. While they fielded a considerable amount of troops, around 70,000, the Egyptians not only had better quality, but fielded significantly more, well over 100,000. In the first three years, the Egyptians won almost every battle due to their overwhelming number of reinforcements and the incredible military expertise of Yona Hakane, one of the greatest generals the Mithridatics had ever faced. Even in a battle where the Egyptians were outnumbered greatly, Yona would use his outstanding military expertise and vast knowledge of the battlefield to turn almost any battle in his favor. In despite of these victories, the Egyptians couldn't capitalize on them, as they weren't able to chase down any of the armies that they defeated due to the formidable fortresses in the region halting their progression. This allowed the Mithridatic army to retreat into Syria and regroup and reinforce unbothered while the Egyptians lost thousands of men trying to break past the many fortifications that blocked their advance. Simonides and the reinforcements from Macedon arrived some months later, and it was finally time for a counteroffensive. It began at the fortress of Triparadisos, the site where the Diadochi agreed to divide Alexander's empire. The battle led jointly by Ariston and the king of Armenia would result in a victory making it the first of many victories to come for the Mithridatics in this war. The Pontics would snatch victory at the Battle of Kona, and then attack Yona's heavily outnumbered army trapped in between the Lebanon mountains at Heliopolitana. Although he fought with bravery and with immense skill, he was ultimately defeated due to facing an army almost three times the size of his. Yona's defeat at the Battle of Heliopolitana would mark a turning point in the war as now it was abundantly clear to the Pontic army that he could be defeated. Afterwards, the Ptolemaics went fully on the retreat, as Ariston and his army laid siege to Damascus and invaded Decapolis. A few years later, in 125, 
the Romans invaded Macedonia once again. Meanwhile, the Pontics continued to descend further into Canaan and Judea, facing only minor resistance. Finally, the war in the east would come to a close in 123, as Ariston shifted his focus on directly facing the Romans. In the peace terms, the Mithridatic Kingdom would acquire the provinces of South Phoenicia and Galilee, while an independent Judean kingdom would be re-established in the region to act as a buffer state between the two major powers. The rough estimates of the combined casualties in the war add up to about 130,000. Despite the creation of the Judean buffer state, this would not prevent further hostilities with the Ptolemaics, as the Judeans would almost immediately side with them, which would be seen as a betrayal from the Mithridatics after liberating them from the Egyptian yoke. I simply have no words for what I've just been through. I guess all I can say is that I've been through hell and back, and I don't know who I am anymore. I am a completely changed person. I, I, I feel like I've just either ascended or descended to another plane of, of existence. I truly do not know where I am or who I am anymore. I don't even know how to put it into words. I'm not mad. That's a thing. I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm not even annoyed. I'm just zoned in, man. <laughs> I do not even know, man. I just don't know. Ugh. I'm talking like this like, as if I'm not even done with the Romans. I'm not done with the Romans, but this war is coming to an end soon because I, I can easily defend the objective. The objective, or the, uh, the war goal that they're going for is just so easy to, to defend. Um, so you might even not see that much when it comes to the Roman war, but, um, wow. That was just... I don't know. Just ridiculous, honestly. I I don't know what to, I'm I <laughs> I did not expect this to go this long. I don't have to be doing this. <laughs> That's the funny thing. I don't have to do this. The mission tree is done. The mythodetic mission tree has been done for the longest time. It is 123 BC. There is no reason for me to be playing this. <laughs> But I am. All I want are some borders. Not only that, the, the, the goal was to just conquer all of my claims that I got from the mission tree. I have yet to do that. Tomex have been knocked out of great power. That's cool. Romans, I don't, I can't do anything to them. All I can do is defend. I'm not, I'm not even going to attempt to land anything onto their mainland because they have 267 ships. And God knows how many troops. So I'm just gonna sit here and defend. How did you get there? I'm gonna be honest, that was incredibly fun. Now that it's over, I'm now reminiscing over it, and that was incredibly fun. But I do not want to do that again. The reason why, at the end of that war, after the, the two initial, uh, the two uh, the crucial battles in, in the war happened, uh, the, the, the Egyptians just ran away. They just ceased to exist. They... They disappeared. They only had like about 24,000 left over here. And I was very confused on what happened. First of all, they were fighting the Carthaginians still. Secondly, Gurha declared war on their vassal here, their client state. And Gurha is allied to the Seleucids. So they, I guess I, they've just been fighting that. Anyways, thank God for that. I do not want to go to war with them ever again. Oh my god, that would cripple the Romans. <laughs> if I released a Churia, that would cripple the Romans. Because they- <laughs> their, their capital would be surrounded, first of all. And their capital would not be fed anymore. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go further. I'm gonna go further. I'm actually gonna go further. You know, yeah, screw this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, honestly. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Whatever I'm doing this video, I already have it in my head what I'm doing with this video. And I hope it turned out well. Um, if it did, please, please hit the like button. Please, just do it, man. I, uh, please, man. <laughs> it's the least you can do. All right, we have maximum war score now. Or mass maximum ticking, I should say. That should be a win, even though I'm on low morale. It's just a terrible marshal, yeah. If we can get them on low, I think we can get the piece that we want. Do you guys enjoy these long videos? I, Because I know this is going to be very long. This is going to be so long. Actually, I could probably get the piece that I want now. Yes, I can. But I can go further, so I will. I mean, this works, Josh, at this point. I mean, my provinces are perfectly fine. They're 
everyone's perfectly happy. Everyone's okay. So I don't need to really worry about this war exhaustion, honestly. I feel like Rome should have a lot more units than this. Like, I, I feel like I should be seeing a lot more from them. And I'm concerned that I'm not. Like, I'm... Why, where are their troops? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, well, there we go. That's a real army. It's about time. The actual entire Italian conscript army. Okay. Luckily, I don't have to fight that because I am done with this. Beautiful. Rome is completely encircled. They're screwed. Rome is completely screwed. I am going to... Um... Do something. I'm gonna guarantee Iadar. I cannot really attempt to guarantee anyone in Italia, but I'm gonna guarantee Yadar, so they don't get attacked, obviously, by the Romans. I think it's legitimately been, like, 20 years since I've actually put my levies down. It just automatically gave Rome to Etruria. That is amazing. That is simply amazing. The Romans have lost Rome. <laughs> Their capital is now in Bucca. Ariston the first, the Helen Mithridated, resplendent in the glory of conquest, has eclipsed all other petty kingdoms. A new title is needed for the ruler of the Mithridatic Empire. Oh my god, here we are. We are now officially an empire. We are the only empire in the world, of course. As it should be. We can get maximum development in our capital. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not underestimate forts. They are so important, man. I cannot stress enough how important forts are in Imperator Rome. Do not underestimate them. I guess it isn't, it isn't show, so much underestimation, it's just neglect. Do not neglect forts, man. Because without forts, I would have not been able to get to the position that I am right now. I simply just would not have won any of those wars. And it's not just building forts, okay? You gotta remember, it's also food. Gotta have a lot of food pro capacity because that directly correlates to uh, fort defense. So if you uh, you wanna you wanna build up huge food supply, because that gives that gives a big a big bonus. Fort defense like ninety three percent. That is ninety three percent, man. A hundred percent over here. Oh my god. Okay, really all I have to do is just like clean up a little bit of Greece here, then finish off Anatolia, and then, then I'm done. I'm I'm just done after that. <laughs> uh, but that will be the next day, because we're now we're going on to the third day of this session. I did not expect it to be this long. I don't know. I... I always seem to... The, the recording sessions always seem to go longer than I expect, but that's just because... It's the nature of these games. It's the nature of Paradox games, man. They never go the way that you expect them. <laughs> ah, we have Earthworks. <laughs> I didn't notice this, but we actually have Earthworks. We're gonna upgrade that. Boom, Earthworks. Okay. Right, we're gonna build a great wall. <laughs> we're gonna build a great wall. At the end of the day, guys, <clears throat> no matter what I say, no matter what I do, no matter how I feel, I did not even mean to build that. Uh, it was all, this is all so fun. I'm still having fun. I'm still having fun, guys. Like, honestly, this is so fun. This would, this, this game is very fun. I love, like, the, the one thing that, like, I love CK3, right? I, I, I'm gonna go on a little rant here, a little tangent here. I love CK3, right? But the one thing that is absolutely missing more than anything else in CK3, personally for me, is a challenge and Imperator gives a challenge this game is a challenge I love it <laughs> I absolutely love it I play games for the challenge I don't even say that lightly this game is fucking phenomenal after the wars with the Ptolemaics and Romans were concluded, Ariston took the temporary peace as an opportunity to expand Mithridatic influence in other regions, particularly in Greece. Remnants of the Antipatric Revolt still remained in power, 
ruling over the Greeks in the Cyclades. In 118 BC, Ariston launched an invasion of Delos, which was the capital and greatest city that the Antipatrids held. The Achaean League, a league of various Greek city-states who had over the last few decades acquired more and more city-states across Attica and Euboea that were formerly ruled by the Antipatrids themselves, had joined the war against Ariston in order to halt further Mithridatic expansion into Greece. There would be no major battles in this war, as the Greeks were not able to put up enough numbers to truly challenge Ariston. Thus, the war ended swiftly, with the remnant Antipatric kingdom in the Cyclades being conquered along with the regions of Attica and Euboea. The Achaean League would also be forced into a subordinate relationship with the Mithridatic Empire, being forced to pay tribute in exchange for protection from the warlike and expansionist Spartans in the south that threatened the balance of power in the Peloponnese. The city-state of Tegea was also involved in the war, and they were forced to transfer their vassal state, the Kingdom of Epirus, to Ariston. In order to further maintain Mithridatic influence in the region, Ariston created a new royal army in Macedonia. They were named Sons of Apollo, in honor of the Hellenic sun god that not only the Macedonians, that comprised the majority of the army venerated, but so too did the Mithridatic family, who equated Apollo to the Aranic sun god, Mithras. The two gods were among the most venerated within the dynasty and much of the core territories of the empire. They were also jointly worshipped alongside Ahura Mazda, who was most likely worshipped more seriously by the royal family. The mother goddess of fertility, Cybele, was also highly venerated by the royal family and worshipped highly amongst the Anatolian population of the empire. In 110 BC, Megas Basileas Ariston would die of a fever at the old age of 77. A spectacular funeral was held in his honor as he was laid to rest in Sinope. His glorious reign will be remembered as one of great conquests and battles. He fought in gigantic wars against the Egyptians and pushed them out of the Levant, dished out countless defeats to Roman legions, and elevated the realm to an empire. The throne passed down to his firstborn son, Koroibos. Unfortunately, because of of Ariston's extremely long reign, Koroibos would take the throne at the age of 54, with his health already slowly deteriorating. Despite his age, he would still hold the throne for a respectable amount of time, almost 20 years. His main ambition would be to finally rein in the remaining independent Anatolian states of Southwest Asia Minor that enjoyed a period of relative peace and prosperity for about four decades. These Anatolian states were all united under one polity, the Oinoandian League. Apart from being a defensive alliance, it also acted as some sort of cooperative, where the member states would meet and hold assemblies to come to agreements on a wide variety of issues, including border disputes and trade. The League was led by Oinoandia, a Kabbalian republic situated in the center of the League that sought to maintain mutual cooperation and prosperity of the various kingdoms and republics within it. Koroibas built fortifications in territories surrounding the League in preparation for an invasion. Invasion, however, would have to be postponed for a time, as he had to march in defense of the Illyrians against the Roman menace. Now, the issue with this war is that they are actually claiming tra Transpadana, and that's in here, that's right here. So they're gonna easily take that war goal and we won't be able to defend it, unfortunately. But at the very least, what we can do is just try to protect uh, the Illyrian side and then just wait for Rome to peace out for this one province because we just simply cannot defend it. Wow, look at those forts. <laughs> Level three fort wall here. Those are actually really good forts that the AI built. Wow, <laughs> I'm very impressed, honestly. Uh, Nuceria beat uh, Etruria and then the Romans beat Nuceria. So that's why they have uh, Rome back, even though the city is gone now. <laughs> They still have these conscripts sitting here this whole time? They haven't went back to Rome? Okay, I'm actually gonna bring my navy out here and just sit. I I think instead of going by sea to Illyria, I think I'm just gonna go by land then. Because I want my navy out here to beat these guys because they're taking attrition, so I would think their ships are damaged. Where's your capital? That's the most important thing to protect. Do you have any forts? Oh my god. I vastly increased the number of my ships, and they have just a bunch of lights. This should be easy, an easy destruction. Frontal assault is apparently not working. There we go. Yeah, destroying. Destroying their navy. Lost 17. And they've taken the capital. <laughs> awesome. There's nothing really we can do. At the very least, we can just sit back here behind the fort. 
Um, but that's it. <laughs> that's really it. There's a civil war. If only I wasn't at war with the Romans. Oh! And they're in a pretty big war with a whole bunch of Greco-Indians, it seems. Moria. Okay. Cool. Really wish I could take advantage of this, but I, I can't, unfortunately. I guess I could. I can bring out some levies. And... Yeah, I guess I could bring up some levies and my, um, and get some mercenaries. It's not the levies I was looking for. Uh, the war is over. Or I'm still at war with the Romans. <laughs> Why am I still at war with the Romans? I don't think I should be at war with the Romans anymore. The war's over. <laughs> Hello? Um, excuse me? I protected Yadar, at least. I, I at least protected them from subjugation. I think I might need to subjugate them honestly for their own protection but uh other than that what's going on why are we still in this war i'm just gonna sit in macedonia and see what happens i don't know all right there you go expand it a little bit into mesopotamia oof oof complete stack wipe we need to get the war score even again in order to just wipe peace them at least so we need to do a lot of battles it seems hey crete can i get some no i mean if i get you a gift Yes, okay, because that would be really nice if I could sit and create. In fact, I can clientate them. Yeah, I'll clientate them. Sit right there. And we're going to wait like assassins. Or they're just going to go the other way around the fucking island. The ship should be damaged. My ships are fully repaired, so I feel like I should be okay, at least initially. I should destroy a good amount of ships. They just still have that insane guy. This guy is too strong. Can you, like, stop existing, please? Oh, look at that. Look at the amount of ships I'm destroying. Okay, yeah, this strat is definitely the best strat. Just building heavy ships or medium ships. Like, really. Don't forget light ships. Building medium ships is where it's at. Wow. 81 ships. That's pretty much their navy completely destroyed. Tolmaics and Carthage are at war, and the Tolmaics are seemingly going into a civil war honestly i should probably just finish up this war pretty quickly and then honestly go deal with the egyptians yeah i should really go deal with the egyptians for sure i'm gonna go declare war on judea and i'm gonna vassalize them simple as all right they won't accept what i want so i'll just light peace out you no know, we'll just declare the war now and just have them funnel into my forts while my my uh my boys get here all right, the boys have arrived. I just stacked wiped an, an entire taxis, I think. Oh, no. I lost a battle, but they lost so much more ships than me. Oh, my freaking admiral was captured. I guess we're going to need to death stack. <laughs> All right, here we are. We're going to keep the legion in reserve. We are absolutely losing that somehow. Okay, right. I don't know how we're losing that, but we are losing that. We're going to get... Legion in there, reinforce, and that should end the, the battle. Surely. As long as there's no other reinforcements. Yep, okay. The peace terms of the Judean War would see the Judean state lose substantial amounts of territory, including its entire coastline. The kingdom was relegated to only directly ruling the province of Judea, and made into a client state of the Mithridatic Empire. The surrounding Pontic-held region would be subject to a similar development project that the region of Syria saw under the rule of Ariston. Many granaries, farms, ranches, and fortifications were built. On top of that were a great number of courts and other legal buildings to maintain law and order in a region that typically is never fond of foreign rule. In 95 BC, Koroibos declared war on the last two remaining independent states in Greece, Tegea and Sparta. The goal of the war was to unify the entire Peloponnesian Peninsula and assign it to the jurisdiction of the Achaean League. The largest and most important battle of the war occurred at the city of Argos, where the sons of Apollo and forces of the Achaean League, numbering around 20,000 men, faced 16,000 Spartans. Despite the Spartans' extreme martial prowess and highly disciplined troops, which no doubt made up for its numerical disadvantage, they were no match for the superior tactics laid out on the battlefield by the commander of the royal sons of Apollo who of which was also a member of the mighty Alexandrides family. Swiftly, the war would be concluded with the entire peninsula under the rule of the Achaean League, and shortly after Koroibos would die, 
passing on the throne to his son, Phrynichos. Phrynichos wasted no time in realizing his father's ambition to conquer the Oino-Andean League. A series of fortifications had been built surrounding the territories of the League by Koroibos. The purpose of these fortifications were to keep the war localized and contained within southwestern Anatolia, by blocking off various passes and choke points, thereby forcing the Anatolians to remain in their territory. Both royal armies, regional levies, and local mercenaries would be involved in a land invasion, while the entire League coast had been blockaded by the Royal Navy, allowing no trade nor food supplies to be transported into the ports. The war lasted three years, and resulted unsurprisingly in the defeat of the Oinoandian League. After around 60 years of Anatolian independence, the League was finally subdued and integrated into the Mithridatic Empire. Now Phrynichos can focus his sight on the east, where there is civil war amongst the Seleucids. At this point, they are a shell of their former selves. Once one of the greatest of Alexander's successor states, they have fallen victim to constant infighting and have been in a steady state of decline ever since the Parthian invasion. Now that they are embroiled in yet another civil war, it was the perfect opportunity to expand Mithridatic borders eastward. Phrynichos marched an army of around 40,000 into Mesopotamia completely unopposed due to the Seleucids being preoccupied fighting amongst themselves in the east. In 86 BC, the Seleucid capital was occupied and by then, the empire had already been fragmented beyond repair. However, it would still take several years to completely conquer Mesopotamia due to the powerful forts and generally unruly population. And ladies and gentlemen, here are your final borders for the Mithridatic Kingdom. Sorry, Mithridatic Empire. I have spent a very long time uh, just perfecting these borders um, and to prove that I didn't use console commands or anything you can see it is 712 it is 42 BC I legitimately played through until 42 BC to get these borders <laughs> now of course the initial goal was to at least just conquer all of the claims that I got from the mission tree and I think I'm gonna make that a a new criteria for mission trees going further, uh, for other, you know, nations uh, going further. For some reason, I really wanted to go for very specific borders. I, I achieved them. Yeah, <laughs> here they are. Here are my borders. Now, of course, there are some things about the empire that I should go over. Um, first of all, actually, not we're disregarding the empire. Um, this is Rome. I may or may not have something to do with this. Just don't worry about it. It's a work in progress. I have really no idea what we should look at first. Here's our ruler, our final ruler, who is literally about to die any moment now. Let's look at our armies here. We have our warriors of Mithras. Pretty much maxed out. I'm pretty sure this is maxed out. Uh, as much, as big as the legion can get. And then we also have the sons of Apollo here. Our only two legions, our only two professional armies. Uh, very strong. If this navy was so good, honestly. <laughs> it just completely destroyed the Romans just constantly. Uh, even the Egyptians as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I could probably just beat the Carthaginians as well. Uh, before we look at religion and culture, let's look at the vas vassal situation. Of course, we have our vassal of Arcadia here, who controls all of the Peloponnesus. I decided to keep them because, you know, I need someone to export to. And I like how, you know, I allow the Greeks to have their own self-rule um, in the Peloponnesus. And then we also have Crete here. I don't also plan to integrate them because I just want to export to them. I just wanted to export to them. Far, sorry, it's quite late. Um, then we have Chalcedon here who, again, same thing, I want to export to. We did have these guys have a va as a vassal for the longest time. It's a tribal vassal, but then they broke free because I believe it's because they became a monarchy. Uh, these guys are a tribal vassal of, of ours. We then have the kingdom of Judea here, literally in the one province of Judea, completely surrounded by me, allowing the Israelites self-rule and also just, you know, for exports. Uh, and then we have our final vassal here, and it's Media. I think it was in the first Seleucid War I had for Mesopotamia. I had them release a whole bunch of nations here, uh, Persis, Media Magna was also released here, and then Media. And then I just vassalized Media and then uh, fed them more Seleucid lands. Here's the religion of the Empire. As you can see, not much conversion. The core of the Empire is pretty much Mithraic. This is essentially the same borders. You can pretty much see where I started off. 
um, off from the last episode because this is before I had major syncreticism, so people were converting a lot faster. So you can see, the borders are still there. There's pretty much Mithrax in almost every single province, except for Epirus. So Epirus is pretty much untouched, but every other province has a Mithraic in it. Then you have Anatolians, you have your Hellenics, Armenians, Israelites. The, the largest culture is Macedonian, followed quite closely by Pontic, and then we have Armenian, Babylonian, Cappadocian is our next integrated one. 390,000 manpower? I just make an infinite amount of gold. Uh, everywhere is stable, by the way. I just, if you're curious to see, every province is completely stable, by the way. Like, it's everywhere is 100%. Major syncreticism is, like, the go-to for um, playing extremely wide like this. Unless you are specifically trying to convert lands and you want to convert lands, you don't want to assimilate, but uh, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to bother with converting or assimilating, and you want to play wide, just major syncretism all the way, and you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, we have 1,200 territories, 18,000 pops. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I guess this is a better way to show. Religious unity, like, very low, but overall, um, mostly Hellenic, then Mithraic, then Anatolian. Makes sense. Then we have mostly Hellenistic, then Anatolian. An Aramaic. Makes sense. Of course, the Metropolis of Sinope 100 civilization. 23 buildings in there. 115 pops. Um, yeah. A whole bunch of trade goods. I, I, I guess that's it? I don't think I miss anything. I think that's pretty much it. I, uh, I mean, I guess I could show you buildings. I built a lot of foundries. There's still so much to build. <laughs> There's still so much to build, man. Uh, but yeah, there's no, there'll be no point. You'll just be building for the sake of building at that point, right? So yeah, I don't, I don't know how this video is gonna turn out. I have no idea how this video is gonna turn out. But what I have in mind, it seems pretty cool, and I hope it turned out well. If it did, like, please tell me in the comments. Like, I need you to tell me, like, if this was worth it. <laughs> Please feel free to share what you think about this video and what you think about the style that I went with. And uh, yeah, hit the like button as well. Also, subscribe if you're new and whatnot. And I had so much fun. I had so much fun with this campaign. Media is still my favorite. Um, but this is definitely, I think, top three. Definitely top three. I think this is number two. I think this is definitely number two. 42 BC, That this is by far the longest. I mean, I have reached the end of the game before, but uh, this is by far the longest I have made it in a very long time. I guess there's really not much else to say, but uh, the video's not done. I have one more thing. I have one more thing for you. But uh, yeah, it's been Alton, signing out. Oh wait, no, hold on, here we go. Gotta give you the, give you the, the, good, the goodies, the goodies. Yeah, there we go, there we go. <laughs> oh wait, no, no. At least media's got it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's good. That's good. Okay. It's been Alton. Signing out. See ya. In 41 BC, the construction of a grand lighthouse would be completed in Sinope. Although at first glance it may seem like just a simple lighthouse, this building holds great symbolic meaning to the politics of the Black Sea and of the Empire. It acts as a guiding light to all merchants and traders of the Black Sea who wish to stop and sell their wares amongst the diverse populace of Sinope, before carrying on east or west to the next port city. It is an imposing structure, towering at around 350 feet or 106 meters, similar in stature to the Lighthouse of Alexandria. The base of the tower is clad with stone, supported with silver beams. At the very top sits the fire that burns brightly through the dark nights and foggy mornings. There is an ongoing myth that the fire that burns atop the lighthouse uses the same flame as the royal flame lit to commemorate the beginning of a new monarch's reign. The lighthouse stands as a testament to the power of the Mithridatic Empire, an empire blessed by the almighty Ahura Mazda, illuminated by the just light of Mithra and Apollo, and kept fertile by the mother goddess Ma.